Are there any chemicals we should avoid that are really just really bad? Formaldehyde is one that I really frown on. That's why the Brazilian barbecue people drive me crazy. <laughs> Formaldehyde is one. Uh, that one has been a no-no. Parabens are another no-no. Those are formaldehyde donors. Any of those aldehydes are also formaldehyde donors. And you'll see those on labels. That stuff is toxic. It's deadly. It's even banned in Brazil. People have died. It's banned in Canada, banned in Europe. And for some reason, it's sold in America. And I guess because when Cardassian advertises something like Oprah, everybody wants it. So people can make other products that have that. What is in the shampoo that's for anti-dandruff? We add a lot of things like a triclosan. It's a good idea, basically, to give it some sort of antibacterial killer to kill any bacteria that's on the head to help the dandruff heal, or I mean, help the skin heal and kill the dandruff. And that's all it is. If you also, by the way, Sulfate. would use sulfated shampoo, sadly, that's very harsh. You know, and I hate the word harsh because that was one of the arguments I got into with, with Joyco at that same hair. Besides stripping the crap out of the hair, it also takes all the crap off the skin because the two things you wash are hair and scalp. I mean, you're not just doing hair for a beauty thing, you're washing the skin underneath it, which is nasty, oily, sweaty, dirty, smelly. Um, and that's the other part of the thing on the shampoo that you wash, like when you take a shower. You, you know, you don't want a half a washing job where you leave some dirt behind. This is not that kind of marketing where people say, well, you've got to leave some grease behind. Why would you want to do that? I mean, whoever came up with that idea where the shampoo's so weak it only does half a job, then you get dandruff. If you had a good shampoo, lemon fluff expands, something like that, you get the hair clean, you'll never have dandruff. Uh, your question, and then I'll get to you. No, I didn't. Uh, so what about natural things that you can eat, like honey or oils that you put in your hair? Do those actually do anything for your hair? Yeah, they get your hair oily and taste good. It's just a temporary thing, like yeah. a product that you might use, and then after a while it just goes away. It's like it doesn't go away, it sticks there. And then you eventually wash it out and replace yeah. it with more stuff. But I, I don't know that the hair will know what a honey or an oil does other than give you a style advantage if you're trying to style it. A lot of times people need that to give them the desired look that they're trying to achieve. And that's really what you're marketing here. Years ago, you know, before all that stuff was invented, people just had clean hair. Uh, but now it's basically something to give you a how you want your hair to flow and swish and hold and then you spray it, you know, with a plasticizer, hence the terms hairspray. That holds it in place. You look beautiful, and your boyfriends love you, and your husbands love you forever. Yeah. Do you put manufacturing date or expiration Oh, yes. Date? Well, we don't put expires by, because the stuff will never expire if, it's, if it doesn't have biologicals in it. So there's no expiration date on products that are not organic. Organic products, we try to put a sell-by date, because it gives us a chance to rotate the stock and sell more product. The vendor salon has to throw it away at that some point in time, because customers go, oh, look, this is expired like tomato juice. And, you know, the hair salon, if they couldn't sell it, tough darts, they're stuck with it. But regular shampoos that you see on the market, you know, Paul Mitchell, Joico, have no expiration date. There's nothing in it that will expire. It will last forever, literally. It's, it's designed, it's like most of the items that we talked about, in fact, we were mentioning before class, uh, petrol atoms and mineral oils. Um, they last forever. Um, so those are those products. Back to the formaldehyde, um, the, the argument was that it was below the OSHA's level of toxicity in the air. Nope. No. Not even a good argument. The OSHA level of toxicity was so low and they had 10% in the Brazilian product. And 10% is a thousand times more toxic and actually poisonous. I don't, you know, if anybody's using Brazilian bar... Brazilian blowout in here. Barbecue. I think it's, yeah, barbecue. I think it's just, I personally think it's poisonous. Uh, I think it's hazardous to you and your clients. Well, um, I have a question about the anti-dandruff shampoos, like tea gel, like really tar-based ones. Yeah. Are those any better or worse? Or not better, not worse. Uh, smell worse. It just smells bad. Um, it's, it's, just, and it's just another base product. In the old days, when people had dandruff, another thing, instead of uh, Medicaid shampoo, they used uh, use pine tar. And pine tar was popular. A question came up, and this is where your question of toxicity came up. Well, some people thought it was toxic. And as soon as somebody says it's toxic, nobody wants to buy it anymore. Well, the rumor's out there. Just like, you know, I believe with, uh, with formaldehyde. I don't know if that's a rumor. I mean, you know, if it's already banned in Brazil, 
already banned in Canada. What's the um, consequences after a while? Uh, formaldehyde? Mm -hmm. You get cancer and die. Oh. I'm sure there's a short version to that one, but that's the best one to tell you. Formaldehyde is poisonous and it, it will cause cancer and you die. Simple as that. But uh, anyway, let me give you one, oh, one more, one more. Um, so if a product says it has keratin in it, does that mean that it has... That's animal protein. protein. Does that mean that, like a shampoo or something, that it has something like formaldehyde in it? It doesn't necessarily may have formaldehyde. They could use another preservative. Just as harmful? Not necessarily. Um, people have used animal proteins for years. You would have to use a hydantuin. You could use a, a glidant. You could use a number of other preservatives. All, however, formaldehyde, as you, another question, it's dirt cheap to put formaldehyde in. It was a very inexpensive product. Salt is a thickener. Salt doesn't dry, it thickens the product. Um, and sulfur in the product is the active ingredient on most cases to help the detergent actually become a, a donor for the grease. That's where the sulfate is designed for. But um, salt is a thickener. When you look at why salt is there, it thickens the product. It's like adding cornstarch to gravy. It does nothing but thicken. Uh, that's the only reason. And salt isn't really that drying, actually. Salt is kind of feels good because you have those salt rubs and salt things on the skin. So they really kind of feel good. So it's not a drying product. I'll tell you, good rumor. Me and Steve Stefano got in an argument before I let you go. And I, he said, you know, Miller, the shampoo you make is too harsh. Well, that's not a nice word. And I said, yeah, so? Uh, your shampoo is so weak. Well, weak is not a worse nice word. He said, well, I like to think mine is gentle and mild. I said, well, I like to think mine, mine is harsh, mine is just very strong. So we're trying to find the right, you know, word to make everybody happy. You know, the marketing made everybody feel good. And then the course for the guy from Redken said, well, you know, Redken is really, really strong but gentle and mild. And I thought, everybody's got something that they want to market their product to make people feel good. And this is what we do.